A Minicraft 1 to 144 scale KI 44 Nakajima Shoki, commonly called Tojo by the Allies, is an Imperial Japanese Army Air Force model of a plane that was primarily a fighter designed to protect the Japanese home islands. Most were painted bright aluminum and were very glossy, not hard to see by the enemy. This is a rather simple model to build and paint as there are not many parts. As you can see by the picture on the box, however, the red Japanese insignia is on a bright white background, but the decal supplied in the kit is just the red circle, commonly called the meatball by the Americans. Therefore, I will mask this very tiny model with our TCP 900 masking paper in order to paint the white stripes on the upper and lower wings and the fuselage. There are only four items to cement together to complete the main body. The fuselage halves, the wings, and the stabilizers. The fuselage halves are the first parts to cement and I am using Plastruck Plastic Weld for this operation. The stabilizer is one piece and slips through the opening at the rear of the aircraft. Set this aside to dry for 30 to 45 minutes. Now, the wings are attached to the bottom of the fuselage. Everything fits easily and you should have no problems in assembly. TCP-013 aluminum is sprayed on the aircraft body, the struts, with the wheels already molded on, fuel pods, and a very small part which is the tiny doors for the wheel wells. Note that I have done only one side so far. As with all other models I have spray painted, I am using a Vega 2000 airbrush fitted with a 0.3 millimeter or medium tip and spraying at 28 to 30 psi. Although the cowl exterior is also aluminum, the interior is matte black, so I decided it would be easier to spray that first and after drying stuff paper inside the cowl and then spray the exterior aluminum. TCP-1359 dark brown is sprayed on the entire propeller. This is accurate for this aircraft type. Now I can spray aluminum on the second side of the parts I did earlier and the cowl. That will complete the initial preparation of the model. Set this aside for a minimum of one to two hours as the next operation is masking the model to spray the white stripes. Since there are no white stripes supplied in the kit, it is your choice to find a white decal stripe from another kit or from another source that may or may not be opaque enough as white decals from some companies are notoriously light or to paint the stripes. I chose the latter since I know that our TCP-005 white is very opaque 
and we wanted to show that our TCP 900 masking paper can produce very straight lines and peels off cleanly from a painted model without affecting the paint underneath. I cut a small spacer of masking paper that appeared to be the correct size to surround the red meatball for the upper and lower wings. This spacer allowed me to mask the rest of the wing surfaces, both the upper and the lower surfaces, and then remove that spacer. I then proceeded to cut a smaller spacer that would wrap around the fuselage to create the space for the white fuselage stripe. After applying this spacer, I then finished masking the entire upper and lower fuselage, tail, and the stabilizers so that the TCP005 white can be sprayed with confidence that no other areas of the aircraft will be white except for the stripes needed for the red insignia to stand out on the plane. Using the same technique and equipment as earlier described, I am spraying the TCP005 white on the model. Note that I am holding the aircraft on the tail so that I can paint all the stripes, the upper and the lower, at the same time. Set aside for 30 plus minutes to dry. Now you can remove all of the masking paper. Using a hobby knife, carefully lift a corner or edge of the masking paper and remove it slowly. You will observe how sharp the stripes are and that none of the aluminum paint was disturbed.
few items need to be hand painted before final assembly. I used TCP 805 flat black to paint the very tiny titers that are molded on the struts. On the machine guns and pitted tube, I decided to apply TCP 1336 gunmetal to give the model more accuracy. The last color I need to hand paint on this model is TCP 1371 Imperial Japanese Army Air Force Interior Metallic Blue. As far as I am aware of, this is the only Air Force that used the metallic blue paint in the wheel wells and the cockpit. The wheel wells are done first and model flipped over. This color is then applied to the indentation on the fuselage that the instructions identify as the cockpit. If you have any questions about techniques explored in this video or general questions about this build, please post your questions in the comments section below.